Hello everybody, this is the last and final part, part 3 of the collection update for October through December of 2019. Crystal's here again to finish this up with me. Um, this is the last part. Video games, this is easily the largest video. It's the largest group of things. So there's a nice bunch of, you know, we got figurines, we got accessories, we got games, we got manuals, we got uh, all kinds of stuff. So we'll get go ahead and get started actually with a pop figure that's video game related that we actually found at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo. It's one of three things I was able to actually get there. The other two you'll see at the very end of the video because it's actual video games. But it's actually Ripto from Spyro the Dragon. Um, we randomly saw this at a booth and neither of us had seen it anywhere before. Yeah. And it was only the normal price of a pop figure. It wasn't like more expensive or anything. So I grabbed it. But this was really cool to have because it's Ripto and Spyro stuff. And there's actually a whole set on the back of this. With I think that's we think that's a different Spyro than the one we have. Because the one has the dragon. It has uh, sparks. Yeah. And then uh, there's Nasty Nork or Ganasty Ganork. Um, if you've played the game, but really really cool to have this. I like it a lot. All right moving on This will be a quick one We got this thing for free at our retro gaming store because they kind of just threw it at us because we couldn't figure out What they wanted or what we wanted for free or whatever They just handed us a frickin Wii zapper. It's not like a it's like a generic aftermarket Wii gun But it is a Wii gun. I don't know if I'm ever gonna use it, but we got it for free so it's it's whatever. I don't know. I don't really have a lot to say about it because yeah. I don't care. I don't even. <laughs> but um, moving on, we actually go on to a, a few amiibo here. Um, we actually had a whole new set of three come out during this period of time for this collection video. Uh, and then there was another one I actually pre-ordered back when we were in Atlanta for her, for Crystal. And it came out during this even though I thought it was going to come out after the new year. Um, we'll actually start with that one. Um, it's actually the Gold Shovel Knight Amiibo. Um, we do have the original Shovel Knight. It's in kind of bad shape, the box, because she put it in boxes and stuff. I can't remember exactly what happened, but it's not in the best of shape. But yeah, really cool to have because I like all the gold Amiibos. Like, I have the Mario one and stuff. She's the Shovel Knight fan, though. We don't need to go into detail about the game, but she can explain what she thinks about the Amiibo, at least. Oh, the Amiibo looks fine. It's just a gold thing of the amiibo like there's okay. nothing really much to say but this game has gone through so much and it's a kickstarter game if they they've done a lot just with it and they're actually finally just done working on anything to do with the game now because they want to move on yeah and, and that game came out stuff. like 2014 or yeah something like 2013 like that. or something <laughs> yeah, like, like when we got together they put a lot of work into this game for sure yeah, because they have a fighting game. They have a lot of DLC for the original game. Like, it's in... Isn't it in Smash? As a, I think it's an assist trophy. trophy. Yes, yeah, it's, it's in Smash. has Amiibos. You know, yeah, it's on Wii that, U and Switch the, and everything. The only other thing I wish I could find is that three-pack. Um, because that, that was the one that was oh, like... Oh, the other night. That yeah. was, like, promised back when the original sh Amiibo came out. And yeah. it took, like, four years to come out. I wish I could... If I would have known about the, the, I, the, I, the I, background he, behind that, I would have pre-ordered that as well. But yeah, I, I didn't even know about the three pack until it came out. I was like, oh, it's, three pack? it's still really cool to have this. It's nice to have some shovel dynamo amiibos at least. Really, really cool stuff. We'll move on to the actual like Smash Brothers amiibos, I guess. We'll start off with uh, these are all either Echo Fighters or New Fighters. Well, the first one we have is Krom, who is an Echo Fighter of Roy, I believe. Um, Roy is one of my favorite characters. And one of my better characters, and Krom is pretty much just like him, so I grabbed it. I really like this cape, but he looks really good. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's a really nice amiibo. I like how the quality has gotten better, I guess, since they first started. The the original amiibo still look like crap, but really, really cool with this one. And then we have some new characters. Uh, the first one we have here is actually Simon Belmont, and I love the... The chain. The chain, yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really good. Uh, Simon, again, interesting character. Not that good with him, though. Um, and then, probably my, my the the biggest one for me of this set, because I'm trying to, I'm, I want all of them. Um, it's Incineroar, so I have all the Pokemon again. Um, but I really like the detail on it. I don't know how well you can see on camera, but they have, like, fur detail. It's not great, but the yeah. detail is still really good. But really, really cool to have this. This is another character I'm not that great with, um, but really, really cool to have for sure. That is it for all of the, the figurines and stuff. We'll go on to uh, the actual, like, I mean, I guess you could kind of still call this stuff accessories, but it's 
it's definitely more, um, it's not like figurines and stuff, but the first thing I got is, I guess this is technically a new console, um, it's a Game Boy Pocket, um, I actually got this for free from a coworker of mine, uh, we ran into him at our retro game store, he was trying to sell stuff, and the place didn't want to take this, I put batteries in it, and tested it, and all the buttons work, so I wonder if maybe it's just the, it's dirty, or something, because all the buttons worked and stuff. Because um, he gave me a Game Boy Advance as well, and that didn't work at all. Like, it was corroded in the in the battery ports. I mean, I probably could have fixed that if I knew, like, maintenance and stuff, but I don't. Uh, that's something I want to learn, though. Um, but still really cool to have this, even though I'll probably really never use it. It's just here. It's just having it to have it, plus it was free. So why complain, you know? All right, moving on, we have a couple manuals. This first one was literally thrown at us pretty much at the same time as that gun from earlier. Mm -hmm. It's actually the manual to NBA Live 95 for the Super Nintendo. I don't even have this game. Um, we found a couple uh, copies of it. I don't think it was the Super Nintendo version though, at the Retro Gaming Expo. I think it was the Genesis version. Yeah, it was always the Genesis version. Yeah, so I don't know if I'll ever actually buy the game to get it complete, but I don't know. It's It was a free manual, so it's it's whatever. But the this other one is a little bit more important because it actually, I believe, gets this complete in box. But it's actually the manual for Mario 3, and it's in this nice plastic, you know, shell, um, or nice, like, plastic casing. But I have the box and the game, so this basically completes it. I mean, it's not, with all the extra stuff that comes with, like, the new games back then, like the Nintendo stuff, like all that extra paperwork I don't have, but this basically completes it in box, I think. So, yeah, really, really cool to have this. It was just, I, I actually bought this deliberately because it was only a couple bucks. So, really cool to have, to get that complete in box. All right, we can actually move on to video games, like, uh, in a sense. Uh, first of all, uh, I, I showed this, or something associated with this earlier. This is actually something I got, or I had signed at the Retro Gaming Expo, along with the Blu-rays, but I had to get Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde signed by James Rolfe. I had to. So, he signed that for me. Um, that's just, I already had the game, obviously. Um, but moving on, we'll actually start here with a, c a couple of uh, PS2 demo discs um, that I got from the same coworker I got this Game Boy from. These were all free as well, and the Retro Gaming Place didn't want to take them, and I kind of like demo discs. I've gotten a couple of them for free from that same retro gaming store, so I just said screw it. Uh, first up we have the Winter 2002 Jam Pack, which has what the original SOCOM, uh, the original Ratchet and Clank, Wild Arms 3, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 4, the first Sly Cooper, and then videos for Tomb Raider and Rygar, which I think I actually have Rygar. Um, but really cool to have that. And then there's the Winter 2003 Jam Pack, which has, oh boy, NCAA Game Breaker 2004, NFL Game Day 2004, Ratchet Clank Going Commando, Need for Speed Underground, DDR, Finding Nemo, Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, a TMNT, huh, interesting. Whiplash? I don't uh, know. Um, wait. I've heard of that game, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. But another demo disc that's really cool with this one. Um, and then this last demo disc didn't, it actually was, uh, there was one other demo disc that he gave me that would not work, so I got rid of it. And actually this disc here was in that same case, but it's not, it didn't have its own case. And I'm including it here because it is still a, a demo disc. It's actually the Holiday 2004 demo discs with, our uh, demo disc with uh, Ratchet and Clank Up Your Arsenal, Jack 3, ATV Off-Road Fury 3, Star Wars Battlefront, Ace Combat, Crash Twin Sanity, Tech 2, the Incredibles, Beautiful Joe 2, and Spiral or Heroes Tale. Um, fun fact about this, and I found out about it later, and I'm glad that I found out about it. Uh, I will probably never play this again, just under the, just because of the fact that I guess the Beautiful Joe 2 demo erases your memory card. Yeah, I googled it at one point to see when it was released, I think. Interesting disc, and just because of the what it does, it's kind of cool to have, even though it's not in its original case, if it even had one. So, really, really cool to have, though. All right, then we go on to uh, quite a few Steam games, actually. Um, so we can go on to the actual video, full video games now. Um, there's quite a few Steam games uh, because uh, the Steam holiday sale was just recently. 
and I got myself a few games and a friend, a couple friends got me games. So we'll go ahead and start off with, uh, I got myself the Jackbox Party Pack 6, which is obviously like, last video I said I got the first five. I know I'm isolating this one, but I got it. It has some really cool mini games. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I didn't with the other games. But there's some pretty cool, it's not my favorite of the five, of the six, but it's, it's pretty good. It has a couple really cool mini games. Then my friend got me Dungeons 3, which I know nothing about, to be honest. Um, my friend Brandon got it for me. Um, all I know is it's like a turn-based, I think it's an RTS or something like that. I'm not 100% sure, but my friend, a couple friends of mine have a bunch of hours in it, and they really wanted me to play with them. So I, he bought it for me, and I installed it. We haven't played it yet, but I do intend to play it at some point. Then I got uh, the first Age of Empires Definitive Edition, which is a completely remastered version of the first game, like HD and everything, uh, completely redone. I know they have one for the second one as well, uh, even though I have the HD remake. There's the Definitive Edition, which is completely remastered. I'll buy that at some point. I never played the first Age of Empires game, so I don't have that much to say about it. But I like 2, and I like Age of Mythology, so I picked it up. Then, I got myself... Far Cry Primal. I've heard mixed things about that one, but it, it seems to take place more in like the Stone Age, so I really wanted to play it. Because, I mean, I have all the other, uh, not all the other Far Cries, but I have most of the other Far Cries. Um, so I was like, hey, might as well grab this since it's cheap. The concept seemed kind of nice, so I grabbed it. Uh, and then my friend Jeff actually ended up buying me Far Cry 4, so I finally have that as well. Uh, that was Game of the Year when it came, a lot of people said it was Game of the Year when it came out. Uh, a lot of people really liked the villain, so I am excited to play it. I want to play through all the other Far Cries first. I do not have five yet, though. Uh, or New Dawn is the other one I don't have. But really, really cool to have both of those. Um, and then I ended up getting the last two games I got myself. Uh, the first one I got was Doom, the remake, or the reboot, uh, from a couple years back. I've wanted that, because I have all the other Dooms. Really, really cool to have. It's Doom, and I heard pretty good things about it. Uh, fun fact about that, actually, uh, the friend, Brandon, that bought me Dungeon 3, originally bought me Doom after I had bought it myself, so I had to send it back to him, tell him to give it to somebody else, and then he bought me Dungeon 3. So yeah, I guess he kind of had to spend extra money just for that. But, uh, the last game... Uh, of the Steam games, and probably the most important one, uh, was the Halo Master Chief Collection. Uh, I've been wanting that since it was announced, because I played the first two Halos, and I really like them. Um, unfortunately, they are releasing all of the Halos in chronological order, and they added Reach to it. So the first game that came out was Reach. Me and my friend beat it in, like, a day, basically. So we're waiting on 1, 2, 3, uh, ODST, and 4. Um, and I have only played 1, 2, and 3, basically. So, Reach was completely new to me. ODST will be completely new, and 4 will be completely new. But really, really fun game. I really enjoyed it. The, it plays really well on a mouse and keyboard. Um, it's really cool to just play Halo again. I was never really huge on Halo to begin with, but it was really... It was just nice to go back and play some stuff that I haven't played in a really long time. So, and, it, and plus it has multiplayer... And all my friends were really big into Halo, aside from me. And it's just an excuse to play more with them. So, really, really fun. Uh, really, really good game to have. It's 40 bucks for like six games. It wasn't even on sale during the holiday sale. Don't care. Really, really cool to have. That is all the Steam games I got. We'll go on to the physical, actual, full video games. Uh, we'll start off with some handheld stuff. The first one ha we have here is actually a Game Boy Advance game that I got for free at the retro game store. Uh, you hear this a lot, but it's actually Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder. Yeah, it's basically just a Park Builder on the Game Boy Advance. Uh, I just got it because I saw Park Builder and I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. From what I saw, it plays pretty basic. I probably won't really play it, but again, it was free, so I can't complain too much. Um, and then the rest of the handhelds are all PSP games. Uh, I actually got these all on clearance at the retro game store because they added a bunch of PSP games to their clearance. Um, so I grabbed, I grabbed three of these actually on clearance, and then the other two I bought full price because I wanted to. But we'll start off, this was actually a game that one of the employees and our friend suggested to me, because um, I was like, hey, pick a game that you think is good, and I grabbed it. Um, it's actually John de Arc or Joan of Arc. 
Um, it's a. It basically looks like your typical. It looks RPG. like Final Fantasy. It looks like just a basic like Final Fantasy esque RPG. Yeah. I thought it was by Square because of the art style. But it, but I know, it's not. I know very, I know nothing about this game. But he said it was pretty good, so it ought to be interesting. This level five. I've oh, level heard. five! I swear I've heard of that. They made the Dark Cloud games, uh, the Professor Layton games, the Nino Kuni games, and the Yokai Watch games. Oh. Yeah, really cool. So that actually ought to be a pretty good game then. <laughs> really cool to have that. Uh, another one we got on clearance was a nice little puzzle game that I've wanted for a little while, Luminous. Puzzle games are good on handhelds because it's just, uh, handhelds are for something quick and easy usually. But really, really cool to have this. Heard good things about it. There's like two or three games on PSP, I think, and they're, pr they're all pretty good. Really, really cool to have that. And then uh, one of the games I actually got on at full price, but it was still like less than $10. I just grabbed it because I'm trying to get the whole uh, collection of this franchise. Uh, it's Secret Agent Clank. Yeah, I don't You're think basically just playing as Clank. Clank. Yeah, I don't think they ever ported this to anything. Apparently, it's a not for resale copy. Um, Ew! What the yeah, heck? that looks so bad. Um, I can't remember if they ported this one. I don't think they did. But really, really cool to have this because I like. I've only played like the first Ratchet and Clank game all the way through, but I started playing the second one at one point, but I never kept playing it. But then we go on to uh, some Metal Gear Solid. Uh, this first one I actually got full price because of the next one. Um, it's actually Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops, and then this is the one I got on clearance, Portable Ops Plus. Now, I was told when I got this that it was like just basically an updated version of this, but it's actually, it says right here, this package does not contain the original Metal Gear Solid Portable Ops. And I googled this, and this is mainly focused on multiplayer. Um, it does look like there's a short story when I booted it up, but this is its own game. That's an actual game. So I had to grab this, otherwise just be stuck with a game that I can, can't really do anything with. But really, really cool to have both of them. Um, I am still missing, what is it, Liquid something? Liquid no, the, the other Metal Gear Solid Liquid Ops, or it's, it's <coughs> the, other, the other handheld one. I don't remember what it's called right now. But really, really cool to have them both. Then we actually go on to home consoles. We have... Quite a few NES games here, actually. Uh, again, same reason as the PSP, and actually before the PSP, this same store had NES games on clearance. So I'm like, well, we might as well go check it out because I'd like to increase my my NES collection. These first two games actually came in a bundle. They had like grab bags for like five dollars, so I just grabbed one just for the heck of it. So we got two games for five bucks. Uh, nothing special. But it was the uh, Bases Loaded game by Jalico. It's just a baseball game, not much else to say. It looks okay for its time. And then we got kind of a mediocre looking copy of Destination Earth Star, which is actually supposed to be a really good game, but the label's kind of busted. I may buy another version of it at some point or something um, just to get a better label. But uh, interesting game. Haven't really played them, but really, really cool. Those were in a bundle. And then these other four... I actually bought on clearance. Uh, this one I grabbed for Crystal because she wanted it. Uh, it's 3D World Runner. Yeah, I'll let her talk about it because um, it looks interesting. <laughs> but yeah, my sister would play this a lot, and I would try to play it, but I was crash when I was a kid <laughs> at video games. But anyway, it's one of those like endless runner kind of games. Okay. And you're just running through and avoiding enemies and avoiding pits and fighting the boss at the end of each world. So that's basically all it is. Ugh. It sounds simple, but when you play it, it's like, it kind of gets faster and faster as you go. But I really like this game. Yeah, it looks interesting for its time. I remember watching her play it for a little bit. It looks kind of difficult though. It is, but for me anyway. Really, 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 really interesting game, so. And then the, the last three NES games here, I, I saw all three of them and I'm like, yeah, might as well grab them. It's the three Double Dragons, Double Dragon, Double Dragon 2 The Revenge, and Double Dragon 3. The nerd reviewed this one, Bimmy and Jimmy, you know. But they're all really, really good just beat em up games that are just mindless beat em up games. Yeah, I played Double Dragon 2 as a kid all the time. Yeah, I, had to, I might as well get, because these are kind of essential NES games, and they were really cheap. So I just, and even the guy at the retro game store, when, he, when, I, when I said, hey, give me all the Double Dragons, he's like, wow, we still have these. He was actually a little surprised that they still had them, so... Really, really cool to have all these, uh, the complete set of that. NES set, so... Yeah. Incre in slowly increasing my NES collection, we're getting there. 
Then we'll go on to some PS2 games. I believe I got most of these on clearance, except for this second one here. I believe three of the four here I got on clearance at that same retro gaming store. You're going to hear this a lot, obviously, but we're regulars there, so it's not that surprising. But the first game is Onimusha 2 Samurai's Destiny. Uh, it was insanely cheap. Actually, I think I got this one for free on their free wall, actually, I think this one was. Uh, I have the first Onimusha, so I just said, yeah, let's just get the second one, and it was free, like I said. Uh, again, haven't played either of them, so don't have a lot to say about that. Um, this game I bought full price for Crystal because she wanted it. I've wanted this game for a long time since it came out. I want to get all the other <laughs> ones in this series, even though they're not as good and are more expensive. But it's The Legend of Spyro Dawn of the Dragon, where there's two dragons. The thing, the thing is about this game, for some reason they have like all these celebrity voice actors in it. Yes. This is this has the same voice them. actors as like a hero's tale um, and stuff because it still has Elijah Wood and stuff. I've heard it's, she says it's pretty good. Um, I don't know because I'm a huge fan of like the original trilogy. Uh, well, I've so. played a lot more Spyro games than you. So. Really cool to have. I mean, I, it doesn't bother me. I'll, I'll check it out at some point. I do kind of want to get all the Spyro games, even the really bad ones. I don't know why, but whatever. Um, moving on, uh, back to some clearance games. I actually grabbed the Street Fighter and Alpha Anthology. I have the Street Fighter Anniversary Collection for PS, uh, PS2 as well, uh, which has every version of Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 3 Third Strike. So I was like, hey, let's get this, because it has Alpha 1, 2, uh, 2 Gold, 3, and Gem Fighter, which was never released on consoles as Pocket Fighter. It was pretty cool. I like the Street Fighter games. They're actually really fun fighting games, so I thought, why not? Let's just grab it. So, and then the other game I got on clearance was Persona 4, because I've always wanted a Persona game, and I've heard this one's really good. I've heard Persona 3 is really good, too. It also comes with the bonus disc, whatever it is. Uh, it's a soundtrack CD. Okay. Yeah, so I've heard Persona 3, 4, and 5 are really good, so plus it's Shin Megami Tensei, and I, have, I now have another one that isn't Nocturne. <sighs> so really, really cool. I've heard these games are great. Um, I don't know a lot about Persona, though, so... All right, we go on to a couple of PS3 games now. Just two. I believe one of them we got for free, and the other one we got on clearance, or unless we got them both for free. I don't remember. I know this first one we for sure got for free, because they were trying to get rid of it, and we're like, yeah, we'll take it. Uh, it's Starhawk. Uh, it looks like a mech game, kind of, or something like that. I don't know. But really, really interesting. Um, and then the other one we have is Dead Island. Uh, I think you wanted this. Crystal wanted this. I have it on Steam. Did I? Yeah. Uh -oh. And so we grabbed it, and it was free. It's supposed to be okay. I wasn't particularly impressed by the game, though, when I played it for a little while. Um, but pretty cool. And then we get, we're getting slowly getting newer and newer. We'll go on to some Switch games. The first one we have here is actually a game Crystal bought for herself uh, because of what they had. She got this at the retro game store again. But it's uh, Starlink Battle for Atlas on the Switch. She got it on the Switch because it comes with, it came it came with the R-Wing. Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and it also, this is the original pilot that comes with the game, but Fox is inside. Let me show there. people Can you who don't know. Okay, okay, yeah. Let me just explain while well, I'm going to roll up my sleeves. So basically, what, how do you play the game is you put the, the Joy-Cons Joy in this, and it's not really motion controlled, so you don't, don't have to do Don't you play that. it like this way, but, though? Don't you play it? No, it's like this. Oh, you play it like that? Yeah, oh, okay. you just play it like this, and okay. then, you know, you can switch ships, because you can buy different ships. And different accessories on the ship, so you can Let take, like, the guns off. Show people Do you remember how to take it off? Yeah, it's just, you lift it. So yeah, you lift there's it, Fox. there's different pilots that have different, like, abilities. And you can, you know, buy more pilots, but I really don't care, I just like Fox. So, and you can buy different ships, too. And you can also buy different weapons. The weapons, like, come off. And but, slip back on. And... The game looked really nice, but it just seemed kind of empty to me. <laughs> like, it looked like the No game... Man's Sky, but you can't go on the planets. The thing is, I was kind of expecting a little bit more from it. Because I was thinking it was going to be like a Star Fox game. Because when it was advertised, I thought it was a Star Fox game because Fox was in it and 
they're making him look like the big star, but in reality, he's just, he's kind of like DLC, basically. He's just like, there. real, like, actual, oh, you have to buy a real thing to get the DLC. Well, but, like, but, the thing I noticed when you were playing is that, like, it still went through the story, but he was just there. It still did the cutscenes well, as if he wasn't there. Though. Yeah, the cutscenes are as if he's not there, but at the same time, when you're in the game, he's talking to the characters that are in the game. Oh, okay. So he's still interacting with characters, but he's just not really in the cutscenes. Okay. It's more of a, you go on a planet, you do missions, you go to the next planet kind of game. Okay. Which can be fun, but for me, it's not that it's not fun, it's just, it's kind of the same missions on every planet. You know, I, I kind of don't like repetitiveness I get in it. a lot of games. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. But yeah, it's an interesting game, at least. It isn't as bad as I heard it was. It wasn't complete garbage like I, I, I remember being or seeing that it was. But um decent thing. Do you have anything else? I think it depends uh, on which version you get, like which console. That's fair. I've heard I guess the Switch version is the best, probably because of Star of Fox, to be honest. But yeah, probably. But really, really cool to have. For sure. Um, the next game, uh, Crystal also bought for herself, or, well, she just bought because she wanted it. It's actually Pokémon Tournament DX. Yeah. We have the original on Wii U, but this has all the DLC. Or, no, it has all the the characters that were introduced as DLC in the first version and on Arcade. Um, there is, I think there's still two DLC yeah, characters. Yeah, there's um, Blastoise and another character that I don't yeah, remember. I, I can't remember it. Yeah, I liked Pokémon Tournament. It wasn't quite my thing. It looks really nice, though. I like how it looks. Um, plus, making a bigger roster is just smart if you're going to have a fighting game. Some of them are weird, like Chandelure and stuff, and like Gardevoir. Chandelure and worst characters to actually play against are Suicune and freaking Machamp. Those really? are like the worst player or the worst characters to play against. Okay. Because a lot of people online just spam. Spam. Okay. Know. Yeah, it's a typical fighting game, though. But really, really cool to have this. I have wanted it. The only other DX game, well, no, there's a couple, but the big one I want to get is uh, the Hyrule Warriors. I really want to get the complete version of that on here because I loved the Wii U game. But uh, moving on, we go on to... I'm actually really surprised these games aren't at the end of the video, but there's some special stuff that I, and a couple games that I think were better than these uh, coming afterwards. Um, but it's actually the new Pokemon games, Sword and Shield. Um, I have only played through Sword, but I beat it. I beat it the weekend it came out. That's how much I played it. Crystal is playing Shield. Yeah, I have like five badges now in yeah. Shield. Yeah, but uh, I will play Shield at some point. But uh, talking about Sword, I'm going to say this right now. The National Dex thing never bothered me to, at all, at all. It's like, there's like 800 Pokemon, guys. If you need the, even, okay, I understand having the ability to put every Pokemon into the game. And I'm sorry I'm doing this rant right now. But the fact of the matter is, you do not need access to 800 Pokemon to enjoy the game to the fullest. You don't. Because that's, you're not going to use 900 freaking Pokemon, guys. But, like, it, that never bothered me from the get-go, and then they said, oh yeah, the recycled animations and the recycled textures and some of the trees look like crap. That never bothered me. I didn't even really look at it in detail of that. And in all seriousness, I actually had a really good experience with this game. Like, I played it a lot. Like, I beat it the weekend it came out. It is a lot shorter. I feel like it's a lot shorter than the rest of the Pokemon games. There is that. But with what they added, there's still a lot you can do even post-game. Like, the whole wild area thing... You can do that for a long time. I didn't do it when I played through the game. Yeah. I watched Crystal doing it and another friend of ours, so I went back and I periodically jump in and go through it, and I'm finding, like, Espeons in there and Gengars and stuff, like, tradable Stone Evolution Pokemon and stuff, like Steelix, Ga Gallade. It's, it's like, there's so much stuff in there, and I like a lot of the new Pokemon. I will be, I, I will be honest, I started with Grookey. I, I was probably going to go Sobble, but then... I changed my mind for some reason, and I'm glad I did, because Sobble has, like, the stupidest-looking final evolution. Uh, the final evolution of uh, Score Bunny is really great. I'm probably going to use Score Bunny next. And then Grookey's final evolution actually really surprised me. They stayed with base uh, base types, too. No dual types or anything. Um, and then all the Galarian forms are great. Obstagoon is a monster. Dude, um, if, you, if you ever play this game, get Obstagoon, because yeah. Obstagoon is bulky. Yeah, I want to play through Shield so I can get Galarian uh, Rapidash and stuff. A lot of the game, the game was actually really fun. I enjoyed it. And then the post-game, or the, the climax, the game climax was really, really good too, even though it was pretty easy. But I overall enjoyed the game a lot. 
Um, and I actually had a friend and his girlfriend that bought the the steel pack, the dual pack steel book case thing with the coin at Best Buy, and then chose to return it because they watched YouTube videos and didn't feel like it was worth their money. And I will never understand that. I mean, I get it. Review should, in a sense, determine if you think a game's worth it or not. But at the same time, I feel like experiencing a game is infinitely superior than watching it. Like, actually hands-on playing it, the experience is way different. Like, I, I can just give an example of Wind Waker. I watched a person play through the whole game and helped him through it with a walkthrough the whole time. But when I full play, when I played through the game myself, the experience was completely different. So it's just, I'll, I'll never understand just letting a review and watching people. It, it's not, because like, it, it doesn't justify not buying the game. Can I put in something? But like, it's just, it, I think the game is great. I don't think it's the best, hold on. I will. I don't think it's the best Pokemon game. It's not. It really isn't. But I don't think it's the weakest either, in my opinion. But Crystal has something to say. If you do base your opinions on a review, it should be like multiple different reviews because different people play video games differently. Like some people, like me, I don't really do a lot of side quests in video games. I just do story and maybe a side quest or two, but that's it. Some people... They like exploring every detail of a game and slowly move with the story and then do every single side quest or they, like with Pokemon, some people, like me, I just go through the story and beat the gyms and that's it. Some people like um, exploring and catching every single Pokemon in an area. And, you know, it, it just depends on how a person plays a yeah, game. And I, I, it I, I depends would... on, like, that person's opinion, too, because some people, some, like, older generation people like a challenge with games, but younger generation of gamers like more casual gameplay. Not that a challenge is bad or anything, but just because a game is easy doesn't make it bad. But some people think that. Yeah, yeah uh, I would like to amend myself from earlier. I completely forgot. It wasn't a review that they based their opinion on. It was a Let's Play. Oh. Which is completely different. If they had watched a single review, even, I would be like, okay, I'd still suggest that they watch more reviews, but watching a Let's Play and being like, oh, this game doesn't look like it's worth our time, that's, that's completely different. That's what I meant. I apologize. Basing your opinion on a Let's Play for sure is crap. Unless you watch the whole Let's Play, but again, people play video games differently. Yeah, exactly. Like, if it's a review, it's one thing, because they try to be objective. Some people try yeah. to be objective, but it is what it is. I, overall, think the games are really, really fun, and I enjoyed them a lot, and I, I still go back. Too. Yeah, I still go back and play them. Do I think they're my favorites? I already said this. No. Uh, honestly, I might still enjoy Sun and Moon better. I think those games are great, but a lot of people didn't like those. I don't know. But um, we do have to move on. Um, we'll start off with a couple of PS4 games, and actually I wanted to put these after the Pokemon games because I thought they were better, and I actually got these for my birthday for myself because I've wanted to play them for a little while, and boy am I glad I did. It's the Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth games. I got both, the original and Hacker's Memory. Yeah, these might be the best PS4 games I've honestly played so far. <laughs> yeah, these games are great. They are kind of in the style of Pokemon. A friend of mine described Digimon games where... Most of them either go the direction of Pokemon or of Monster Rancher. So, like, the Digimon World games kind of go Monster Rancher. These went Pokemon. So I guess you could kind of say they're a Pokemon clone, but honestly, I might have actually enjoyed these better than Sword and Shield, and Sword and Shield were great, too. But these games were amazing, plus the story. Oh, my God, I cried. I almost cried at the end of this first one. And the second one... The, the second one takes place simultaneously as the first one, but the first one has more serious, like, repercussions. Like, it's a more broad or... It's a... I don't want to say bigger... The ending and the climax are bigger than this game, even though they take place at the same time. Like, the overall impact of everything is in this game. And basically, you're just a side... You're not really a side... You're a major side character with a bunch of stuff happening. But all the stuff in the first game happens no matter what you do in this game. And there's stuff that... Basically, some stuff happens where... There's in, irreparable changes, I guess is the term, but no, I really, really enjoyed this game. Plus, like, you have 200 Digimon in this game, you can have in 300 in this game. Um, I know they have the complete edition on Steam and on Switch. 
um, if I would have known. I think it came out right after I bought these, actually. But I don't care. It's not a big deal. I really, really enjoyed these games. They play so well. I The funny thing about this first game is that I didn't quite know how I was playing or what I was what I was doing, so I ended up getting some Digimon late, but I knew exactly what I was doing in this game, so I was able to cruise cruise through it a lot easier. I only had to grind once in this game because I didn't have the right type of Digimon. This game, I didn't have to do anything. So it wasn't super difficult, but I really enjoy the story of both of these games and just all the characters. They're so good. It is all in Japanese, too, so you have to read a lot of text, but really... Really good. I enjoyed these games so much. There are so many cool Digimon in these games. I think each game took like 40 hours for me to beat, and I played a lot of it. So it, it took it took quite a while for me to beat these games. These I that, that's a standard JRPG. I know, but like I'm saying, like compared to most games I play, I put a lot of hours into both of these. And it's really cool that if you actually had a save file from the first game. Uh, you could load directly through it in this game, get extra items, and then it actually con continued your time, total time, through the second game. So I actually had a time for both games together. It was like 85 hours or something like that. Really great games, man. Like, these games are so much fun. Crystal, you need to play these. They're actually really good. Oh, probably. Yeah, they're really fun. Really, really good games. Definitely, definitely the best things I've played in this entire collection video. But, um, and I actually beat some games, but... We go down to the last two games, and these are actually special. These are the two games I bought at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo, and it was two games that were really, really high up on my list of games to get, even though they're not particularly like big and must-own games for each console. Um, they were at the top because of how hard to find and or expensive they were, and I got them for a really good price. One of them is actually one of the few Digimon games I was missing. Digimon World 2 for the PS1. It was the only Digi This is the only Digimon, I would say, main series Digimon World game I don't have. And it is different than the other two on PS1. This is more of a dungeon crawler. So it might actually be a little bit easier than them, but I really wanted this. And everywhere I'd seen it, it was like 50 bucks or more. I found it for like 25 so I was like, whatever, I'll pick it up. Um, really glad to have this game. Oh, it's, it's really cool to have a classic Digimon game. And then to close out the video, I call this the big one, even though it's really not like what it is, it's, but the price of this game. Uh, I finally grabbed Jurassic Park Operation Genesis. It is the PS2 version. Um, they had it on Xbox, which is where I originally played it. And then it's on PC as well. Now, I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this in a video, but everywhere I've seen this game, it's been $75 to $100. I found it for like $40. And I just couldn't pass up it being over half or under half of what I normally see it as. Um, I did recently look it up on price charting, and that's about how much it's worth is $40. Bucks. So a lot of stores need to mark down the prices. Really, really cool to have this. I don't know if I'll ever play it because I have Jurassic World Evolution. But I have a lot of memories of playing this on the Xbox, uh, borrowing it from my friend Brandon and playing it. Um, if I can get into it, I'll try to play it again. But uh, it definitely is more sandboxy than Jurassic World Evolution. Um, I mean, there is a sandbox mode in Evolution. I haven't really done much in it, though. So I'm really happy to have this and Digimon. All these games, really. I mean, these Digimon story games were phenomenal. I got two games that were at the top of my list. Then you got Sword and Shield. I mean, I, got, I increased my NES collection and PSP collection. I basically doubled my PSP collection with this collection video or this collection update. It's it's pretty funny. Um, and then, you know, just some good PS2 stuff, because, like, that has the biggest library of anything. But, yeah, that's everything. We're done. I got some pretty cool stuff in these last couple months. That is it for the video game section and my collection update for October through December of 2019 as a whole. I don't know, again, I do this every time, I don't know when the next collection video will be. There are still some CDs for Prog Power I need to get. I have a couple of Amiibos coming out in January. Yeah, we'll see. It might be a little while because we are a little low on money right now. And uh, I'm trying to pay stuff off. So, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, hopefully there'll be more videos. I have some ideas um, for the next couple months of stuff to do. But that is it for the collection video. I hope you guys enjoyed all these. It was really fun to make. Yeah, later. Okay, bye.